Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and formations of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. And today, we shall be looking at another of the successor chapters of Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marines, another biscuit for a Monday. And this week, it is one of the successor chapters of the Praetorian of Terra, the Seventh Legion, the Imperial Fists. Of course, I can only be speaking of the Hammers of Dawn. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, The Hammers of Dawn are a Codex Astartes compliant Space Marine chapter raised from the gene seed of Rogal Dawn as a successor chapter of the Imperial Fists during an unknown founding, but which dates back to no further than the 41st millennium. The Hammers of Dawn are stringent adherents to the Codex and uphold Gilliman's scriptures with exacting precision. This has fostered a great rivalry with the Ultramarines and their successor chapters. Exactly which founding the Hammers of Dawn were created in is not known for sure, though most signs point to one of the earlier 41st millennium. Despite their relative youth as a chapter of the Adeptus Astartes, the Hammers of Dawn have already proven themselves during hundreds of campaigns, including the bitterly fought Aculus Crusade against the Word Bearers and the Night Fire Wars against the Tau Farsight Enclaves. Even amongst the successor chapters of the Imperial Fists, the Hammers of Dawn exhibit a veneration of Rogal Dawn to the point of obsession. They take pride in their Primarch way beyond the norm. They believe Rogal Dawn was the Emperor's true favoured son and take great pride in his accomplishments, especially that their Primarch fought side by side with the Emperor during the Horus Heresy. The Hammers of Dawn uphold the precepts and dogmas of the Codex Astartes with such fervour that its battle brothers go so far as to claim that whilst Reboot Gilliman conceived the Codex, only the warriors of Rogal Dawn can truly master it. The Hammers are ever seeking to prove their superiority on this point and take pleasure in pointing out the smallest failings to the Ultramarines and their successor chapters whenever they do not match their own militant standards. The chapter teachings of the Hammers of Dawn invest a great significance in what they perceive as the rivalry between their Primarch and that of the Ultramarines, even going so far as to extend their rivalry to the present day. While the Hammers of Dawn maintain a non-violent rivalry with the Ultramarines and their successor chapters, they hold a very real hatred for the word bearers. By all accounts, the situation arose when the Hammers of Dawn took it upon themselves to prove their superiority to the sons of Gilliman by taking on their rivals' ancient foes. Since then, the Hammers of Dawn have fought the word bearers on many occasions, to the extent that they have come to regard them as specifically hated foes in their own right. Notable Campaigns The Dread Gestalt, Year 353, Millennium 41 when the weird vein psychers of the Vostroyan Firstborn 122nd Regiment came through a difficult warp translation, they arrived in real space as a gestalt entity of terrifying psychic power. Reveling in their new abilities, they rose up amongst the ranks of their former comrades in the Astra Militarum and enslaved every one of them to their bloodthirsty desires. When the regiment arrived on Sylvanus II, they set about the murder of the population. The Hammers of Dawn were sent on a planned for mission to destroy the so-called Dread Gestalt, but the powers of the Weird Vein Psychers were so swollen that the Space Marine attack was repelled with terrifying ease. Only when the Culexus assassin known as the Revoker was unleashed into the Vostroyan ranks did the Dread Gestalt lose its power its individuals flopping back to earth as weak as newborns. They were killed to a man by Vostroyan bayonet, even before the Revoker could close with his target to finish the job. The Aculus Crusade, Year 777, Millennium 41
The chapter's involvement in the Achilles Crusade had focused on the worlds known as the Bloody Trinity, where the Hammers of Dawn had pursued, without recourse to the Crusade's high command, a series of raids against the forces of chaos holding the region. In all probability, the Hammers of Dawn were seeking to ascertain the truth of the rumor that the Word Bearer's Traitor Legion was active in the area, pursuing their well-known hatred of this particular enemy. The chapter recently fought a void duel against the notorious Chaos Carnage Cast Cruiser, Black Grail, though they came off the worst in the engagement and were forced to withdraw, much to their chagrin. The chapter's forces are currently refitting Karlak and are, by all accounts, nearly ready to head back in search of their foes once more. The Vaxalian Genocide Year 926, Millennium 41 The Chaos Renegades known as The Purge chose the verdant imperial world of Vaxaria as their next victim. The planet's surface was soon riddled with consumptive disease and crippling famine. Over the course of a single solar month, the Purge engineered the destruction of no fewer than 14 billion imperial citizens. This atrocity did not long go unnoticed. Voxalia had served as an astropathic relay hub on a fortress planet, vital to the defense of the Heracles system. As a result, when the Imperium finally responded, it did so in grand style. The entire Hammers of Dawn, Fire Lords, and Crimson Fist chapters initiated the planet strike. Reinforced by 12 battle groups of Cadian shock troops, and the Imperial Knights of House Raven. Soon, Vexaria was a roiling caldera of war, the Druin forces from across the sector. Vexaria's fate grew yet more dire when the plague ship Terminus Est arrived in orbit, disgorging hundreds of plague marines and countless millions of plague zombies onto the planet's surface. Typhus led this fresh assault and, with each day that passed, more of the Cadians succumbed to the zombie plague. Soon the Space Marines and Knights found themselves fighting alone against a tide of traitors and walking dead. When a second Imperial battle fleet arrived, its commander deemed the world irretrievably lost and began preparations to evacuate the survivors and commence exterminatus. The Nightfire Wars The Nightfire Wars were fought between the Imperium and the Tau Farsight Enclaves. The Iron Knights and Hammers of Dawn saw bitter combat in that campaign. Chapter Combat Doctrine The Hammers of Dawn maintain a combat doctrine not unlike their progenitors, with a particular focus on heavy units. They make extensive use of Devastator and Terminator squads, as well as Vindicator siege tanks and dreadnoughts, eschewing speed and maneuverability in favor of firepower and protection. Chapter Beliefs the chaplains of the Hammers of Dawn teach that their Primarch is especially favored in the eyes of the Emperor of Mankind, for he stood by his father's side during the darkest days of the Horus Heresy. Gilliman and his descendants, these chaplains preach, cannot lay claim to such a proud deed, for the Ultramarines were fighting against the word-bearer Traitor Legion on the other side of the galaxy when the Siege of Terror reached its conclusion. The Hammers of Dawn therefore hold that their Primarch, Rogel Dawn, was a preeminent son of the Emperor, even going so far as to regard the Ultramarines and their successor chapters as somehow lacking. For the most part, the Ultramarines maintain a stoic disregard for what they see as the Hammers of Dawn's somewhat unbecoming and undeserved self-regard. To date, the two groups have not actually engaged in honorific combat, though tensions often simmer just below the surface when they encounter one another. The Hammers of Dawn look for rivals amongst both friends and foes alike. The chapter holds the word-bearers with the utmost contempt and will go to any lengths to prosecute them and bring them to meet the Emperor's justice if there is even a whisper of their presence in local space. Chapter Relics Weight of Duty Weight of Duty is a master-crafted Astartes power maul. The flat head of this power maul is lined with a miniature grav plate, similar to those that line the decks of great void ships. Upon striking a foe, 
The grav plate activates for a brief instant, multiplying the hammer's impact many times over by increasing its descending weight. Chapter Appearance The Hammers of Dawn wear black power armor with brass or gold on the trim, helm face and aquila or imperialis on the chest plate. A white high gothic numeral is stenciled in the center of the specialist symbol, indicating the squad number. Accompanying markings are displayed on the left knee plate. Chapter Badge The Hammers of Dawn Chapter Badge is a modified version of that used by the Imperial Fists. A brass clenched fist holding a brass hammer superimposed over an Imperial laurel, also brass. This is centered on a field of black. End quote. I have been Baldemod, your faithful servant. If you are intent on gaining any figures, then do please consider getting a discount and using one of our affiliate links, as that helps us out at the guides. So a good deed while filling a need, so to put it. And do consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then please hit the notifications button, as I would not want you to miss out. There is, of course, a Discord and merch link in the description as well. Thank you for listening. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.